We live in an increasingly digital world. Our movies are digital, our photos are digital, and our music is digital. But what does digital mean, and how can digital information describe the variety of things that it does? Digital signals can be thought of as consisting of two states, similar to the dots and dashes of Morse code. When describing digital signals, these states are often referred to as noughts and ones. In the real world, though, information such as sound usually takes the form of analog waves. Unlike digital signals, analog waves are continually varying, taking any value. So, how can an analog wave be converted into a digital signal? And once converted, how can it be transformed back again? In this short video, I will look at these processes. Consider the following example of an analog wave. Waves, similar to this one, are formed when a microphone is used to capture a voice conversation or piece of music. The first stage in creating a digital signal is to take measurements of the analog wave at regular time intervals. These measurements are known as samples and the process of taking them is known as sampling. As samples are taken, the height of each sample has to be measured. This is done against some scale. The scale is split into regular height intervals, with each height measurement being given a unique label in terms of a short sequence of noughts and ones. In my example, I will use a sequence that is three digits long, allowing me to split my scale into eight different heights. Each sample may now be measured against the scale. The samples are rounded up or down to the nearest division on the scale, and by doing so, they are given a code describing their height. This may seem rather approximate, but in real examples, more digits than this will be used, allowing a greater range of sample heights. The process of turning the sample heights into noughts and ones is called encoding, and once this is done, the process of converting the analog wave into a digital signal is complete. The signal may now be stored or transmitted. To turn the digital signal back into an analog wave, the whole process is reversed. The digital signal is split once more into the individual groups of noughts and ones, each of which represent the height of one sample. The samples can then be reconstructed by turning each sequence of noughts and ones back into a sample height. Finally, the tops of the samples can be connected to reconstruct the analog wave. So, how does the reconstructed wave compare with our original? Well, considering we encoded it as a string of just 33 noughts and ones, not bad. The main features of the waves are there. It's just the finer details that are missing. By taking more samples and using a greater number of sample heights, a much greater level of accuracy could be achieved. With compact discs, for example, 44,000 samples are taken every second, and 66,000 sample heights are used. Consider the following analog wave. If we want to capture this wave, we have to take two samples of it, one at its peak and one at its trough. Providing we do this, we can reconstruct the wave perfectly. It is an established principle that in order to capture any analog wave perfectly, you must sample at a rate that is twice the frequency of the highest frequency present in the signal. Failing to sample at a high enough frequency can, however, create other problems. Consider this high frequency analog wave, which I will sample at a rate less than twice its frequency. When the samples are put back together, the resulting wave looks nothing like the original. In fact, not only is the fine detail missing, but now a low frequency wave has been introduced which was not there previously. This is known as aliasing and is a common side effect when sampling rate is too low for a given signal. To avoid aliasing, either the sample rate must be increased or the wave must be filtered to remove high frequency components before the sampling can take place. Let's go back 
and take another look at our analog wave. Given that digital signals are created by taking measurements from analog waves, it's tempting to ask why bother? Why not just stick with the original wave? It turns out that there are many advantages to digital signals, one of which concerns the presence of noise. Noise is the name given to unwanted interference that affects the quality of any signal, something which in practice it is impossible to get rid of. Noise can result in unwanted high frequencies being added to signals, which effectively blur out the original signal. When this happens, the finer details in a signal become lost amongst the noise and, in the case of analog waves, are impossible to recover. However, consider a digital signal. Noise affects digital signals in exactly the same way as it does analog ones, but unlike with analog waves, all the important details, the noughts and ones, can still be made out, and hence, providing the noise doesn't become too great, the entire signal can be recovered entirely. Absence of noise has another important implication for sampling. The blurring caused by noise places a limit on how accurately you can sample an analog wave. As a result, it is pointless trying to sample a wave to an accuracy that is greater than the level of noise present in the signal. This gives us a simple way of calculating the optimum number of sample heights to use when sampling our wave. In this example, I have called the height of the original analog wave V total. The level of noise is called V noise. In terms of these quantities, the optimum number of sample heights is given by V total divided by V noise. During the last few minutes, I have outlined how digital signals may be created from analog waves. The stages involved in this process are first of all sampling, which involves measuring the height of the wave at regular time intervals. The optimum sampling rate is double that of the highest frequency present in the wave. The second stage is encoding, which involves turning each of the sample heights into a series of noughts and ones. The optimum number of sample heights depends upon the amount of noise present in the original signal. Once this is done, the signal is ready for use and can be stored, transmitted, or because digital signals are to all intents and purposes just a string of numbers, the signal can be further manipulated, enhancing, encrypting or compressing it. A further advantage of digital signals.